Welcome everyone to another video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at fire types and we're going to be answering the question of what makes fire types good or bad do they need a buff and and how can we how can we fix it so the question might be well, why why do this analysis one valor ash tweeted about it did a poll they say that analyzing fire types is what people want uh fire types have been meta in previous cups, but they've always felt replaceable or mandatory. So they've been meta in Rainbow uh, with Charizard and Ninetales, uh, been meta in Kingdom with Alolan Marowak and Blaziken, and they've been meta in Sinister uh, with Alolan Marowak. But they've always felt like that you could run without it, or they could form a team without it, and they haven't felt mandatory, unlike some other types, um, uh, such as in Regionals with Azumarill or Lucario, uh, in Kingdom or Medicham in in Boulder or a number of other other situations like whenever fighters fire types have been meta they just haven't been like absolutely mandatory for for most winning teams to run and the, to answer the question do fire types actually need a buff so let's actually go ahead and take a look at the overall PV Pokes course and when we start filter by fire types we see that Charizard is number one or by fire types at rank number 28 um, 49 rank 49 is cast form 58 is typhlosion 60 is alone marowak etc etc so you'll see that they not scored uh they're not ranked very highly considering there's only 18 types and within the first 36 there's only one and there's none in the top 18 that's actually usually not a really good sign for for that type but let's actually compare it to other types so when we compare it to other types, when we take a look at the five, top five Pokemon by PV Poke score, um, you'll see that fire types are ranked third from the bottom. And they really pale in comparison to like flying types that include like Tropius and Altaria and and Skarmory and a number of other really great flyers. And and we know that flyers are, are fantastic because whenever it's a really open format, double flyers doubling up on one type in an open format or a format that's more open where it allows like many different types it really tells you how strong flyers are in this meta and a lot of times these flyers are double typed and have really great moves but flying types have certainly been been blessed uh in pokemon go pvp you see steel types part of that is built up by by the likes of reggie steel uh recently coming to the fold uh as the number one or number two ranked uh, Pokemon overall in, in PvP. And we see Azumarill for, for water types with Swampert and, and a few others. Uh, we see Psychics with Defense Eoxys, Hypno, Bronzon, a number of other Pokemon. And we'll see that these really powerful types and Fire is, when it's used, it's really kind of niche. Um, and that kind of plays out in its overall uh, scoring by PvP Poke. So why is this the case? So when we take a look at one thing we can look at is like how good is fire defensively and this is actually a little bit surprising uh fire is actually uh, when you take a look at weaknesses resistances and double resistance where you count weaknesses as negative one resistances as one and double resistance as two you'll see that uh fire types actually rank um tied for third uh with a net score of three and that's actually a little bit that that kind of surprised me when I when I looked at it. Obviously, I know what fire resists and um, what it's what it's weak to, uh, but it's also important to know like what it's weak to um, in terms of these numbers. So, like uh, one of its weaknesses being water um, is like a really big uh, deterrent for it, and and what it resists is like maybe not as common um, uh, in terms of like attacking. Um, so take that into consideration. It also doesn't factor in what resists these types. So for example, uh, water and dragon and, um, and rock are all really great types in, in Great League, uh, but uh, they are, uh, um, but that's not factored in this chart. So just take that into consideration. But fire as an overall defensive typing is, is not that bad and certainly not one of the reasons why uh, fire is not one of the top types in Pokemon Go. Um, how about in terms of this bulkiness in terms of product stat? So we take a look at the bulkiness or the product stat of the top five um, Pokemon per type, and you'll see that fire types are ranked fourth from the bottom. So bulkiness is certainly one of the reasons why, um, or certainly doesn't help 
um, fire types in terms of achieving uh, really, really great results uh, in, in PV Pokes overall ranking scoring or in an open meta. Uh, but how does that compare to its rank? So it's like pretty similar. Its PV Poke rank is 16, its bulk rank is 15. And you'll see that there are certain types like Grass and Dragon that really overcome uh, their lack of bulk. Um, uh, because of their really great moves, Dragon Breath, for example, or, or Frenzy Plan and Vine Web, uh, being other moves that help it overcome uh, its lack of bulk on average. And when we take a look at the fast moves of uh, in in Pokemon Go, uh, what I've done is I've taken all the fast moves and I've, uh, I've taken the DPT plus EPT times 1.25 because we generally prefer more energy and then gave it like a kind of a total score there. And you'll see that, you know, fire type fast moves are not that bad. They're ranked fifth from the top, but there's like nuances in, in this number because how many, how many fire fast moves are actually in the game? There's actually only three, fire spin, fire fang, and ember. So when we actually go ahead and take a look at what's the best fast move by type and then rank it, you'll see that um, fire spin is actually more it's like it's still a good move, uh, but it's ranked lower um, on the list, and certainly not one of the reasons why um, it's a, not the. It certainly doesn't help it that much in terms of its overall overall rank. Um, versus these other types have like really big vol variability in their in their move sets, which is why their average might be lower, closer to fire fire types such as fighting, counter. Is the only good fighting fa fast move in the in the game in the game. It, the other fighting fast moves are 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 very bad, and and uh, but if you're a fighting type, all you need is counter, and that's all that's all you need. It, the upside is very high. Versus for fire types, you get fire spin. Yeah, that's a little bit better than than ember, um, and certainly a different different than than fire fang, which is more about uh, DPT, but it's not even really that great of a DBT and like when you compare it to um, it's a clone of rock throw all right and rock rock types best fast move is smackdown which is better than rock throw so take that into consideration um when analyzing uh these these moves and it 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 doesn't hurt it a lot uh but doesn't help it very much either so uh when we take a look at uh charge moves um when we rank it by dpe uh, you'll see that again. Fire types are not that bad. They're fifth from the top, and we see that the best uh, of each fast move when we dive into the details uh, are, are it's pretty high. Third, third from the top, Blast Burn, just behind Frenzy Plant and and Hydro Kin, which is in a in a really elite class and one of the very few moves in the game that achieve the breaking the two uh, damage over energy uh, ratio, uh, which is which is very impressive, but. When we dive a little bit further into it and remove legacy or uh, moves that are very specialized like Doom Desire uh, or um, or some other ones, um, or like for example, or like Weather Ball, which is really restricted to, to certain types, um, or in this case, just restricted to cast forms right now, you'll see that the best one is Overheat. But Overheat is 80 energy. That's like an absolutely uh, crazy, crazy amount. And you'll see that... Um, the next best one, when we remove those like more than seventy energy ones, you'll see it drops off to flamethrower, which is which is okay, uh, but it's also not great, and it's at one point six four. Um, and when you compare that to, for example, electric, like the best one is zap cannon at one point eight eight uh, DPE, and then the drop off goes to wild charge. It's one point eight. It's like the drop off is almost almost nothing for giving up thirty thirty energy. Um, so, you know, it's just that when you when you look at it from a service level point of view, you think that fire type charge moves are okay. Uh, but when you actually dive a little bit further, the fire charge moves don't really help it that much. When you think about fire charge moves that apply to to the wider uh, meta, there's a lot of Pokemon that a lot of fire types that no flamethrower. You know, some of them legacy, but uh, that no flamethrower. Uh, but unfortunately, it's it's uh when we die, when we take away flamethrower then you're really getting hurt in terms of uh, what moves are are going to be viable uh and when we put it all together what are the flaws so we look at charizard uh 
it's too squishy. Like it's it's uh, it has a ranked two hundred and fourth uh, highest per stat product out of like you know, which is way below like a uh, really really poor for a Pokemon that's been used quite a bit, and it's been used quite a bit mostly because of its move set, um, Fire Spin, which is an above average fast move, Dragon Claw, which is really good bait. Uh, and some okay coverage, and then a Blast Burn, which is the third best charge move in the entire game. Uh, but if it had a stat product similar to Torkoal, it would have a similar win rate as Azumarill. Again, that's a little bit over-exaggerated uh, because the stat product, you scale up, like you go up three levels, then it's like attack stat is like really high and it has okay bulk, um, which is not realistic. Obviously, CP gives a constraint, but any like... If you if you gave it the same uh, stat distribution as Torkoal, it would still it would perform uh, way better. Um, when we look at Sunny Cast form, Ember is not a great fast move. Um, three three uh, at at two turns is is not good at all. Uh, but if you gave it Fire Spin, it would have a similar win rate as, as Charizard, so it move up on the list. And Typhlosion, if you it, it, it's too squishy and it has no bait move. If you gave it, um, if it had a stat product similar to Torkoal and had Dragon Claw, it would be the number one Pokemon in all of Great League. Again, take that into consideration because the way I'm scaling it up is like increasing its level, which means that it's like has a distribution that's not quite realistic, but it would still be an, an amazing Pokemon if it had more bulk and, and a bait move. And um, Bone Club uh, is amazing for, for baiting, but gives little coverage. Like, uh, Bone Club to be better than than Shadow Ball, it has to be two times uh, super effective, or something has to be resist uh, Shadow Ball by two times, like normal types, for example. If you give it Aqua Tail better, uh, if you give it Aqua Tail, it would be top five and and uh, and would have better consistency, just because Aqua Tail would would give it way better coverage. But a lonely Marowak, admittedly, and you're gonna see it in there then. Uh, is like a really good Pokemon. It has kind of like, it has okay bulk. It has an okay fast move, like a pretty good fast move in Fire Spin. Has a really great nuke and has a bait move. That's kind of like the recipe uh, for your typical good PvP Pokemon. So what are the solutions? Uh, one is to buff Ember. If you made it Mirror of Mudshot, for example, that, I know that's a lot to ask for, but we already have Fire Fang. That's uh, about the higher DPS, uh, higher DPT, we have Fire Spin. That's kind of like that balance move set. And if we gave Ember like more like Mud Shot type thing, um, Sunny Cast Form would absolutely be OP. It would have a similar win rate to Altaria, and it would it would run wild. Like Sunny Cast Form would be uh, super incredible. And then other Pokemon like like Mercargo that has some decent bulk as well. And I'm sure there's a few others that also have Ember. Uh, would would be become a lot more viable. Uh, introduce new fast move or charge move. Admittedly, there are not a ton of uh, fire moves in Pokemon that are not already in Pokemon Go um, that are learned by a lot of Pokemon. So like Flare Blitz and Inferno are some examples where they're they're learned by quite a few Pokemon, but the the distribution is, is still pretty limited when you compare it to like Flamethrower or Ember. Uh, buff Heat Wave is, an, is another one. If you make it similar to Weather Ball, uh, Heat Wave is just not like a move that no one uses right now. Uh, and if you don't want to distribute Weather Ball, which has some restrictions on what Pokemon can learn Weather Ball, um, it would really uh, buff bulkier fire types such as Ninetales and Marcargo, and I'm sure there's a few others. Uh, that would really benefit and it would certainly make these Pokemon a lot more viable and a lot more useful and then you would see more top tier Pokemon. Um, one thing though when I was going through my analysis I really couldn't understand why Alolan Marowak's uh, ranking uh, was like that and it actually turned out that um, PV Poke was simulating based off of using Hex. When you use Fire Spin it actually wins out a ton more matches and gives a lot more coverage. So actually, Alolan Marowak is ranked number seven, and it is an example of a Pokemon with a decent fast move, uh, a bait move, then a nuke, a surely strong nuke move. And that's kind of like the recipe of like uh, a Pokemon with like very, and its typing is not that bad either. Um, it's Ghost Fire, 
and it's very complementary in terms of like picking up more resistances than 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 weaknesses it picks up. Uh, so those are actually like two decent defensive typings when combined together. Don't really expose like any major holes uh, in terms of a lonely Marowak. So a lonely Marowak is kind of like the stereotypical Pokemon that's making the most of its if it's uh, typing and stat product. And you know when you compare it to the rest of the top ten, it loses to Altaria, uh, but still can put up a okay fight. Uh, uh, beats uh, Registeel. Um, you know if if Azumarill doesn't have Hydro Pump. It's certainly going to have a, a few more issues. Um, it, be, it beats uh, Defense Deoxys as long as it doesn't ha have uh, Rock Slide um, in all shield scenarios. Loses Swampert, beats Tropius, loses to Zoellus, uh, beats Skarmory, then loses to Bastanon, but still is able to put a, quite a bit of damage onto to Bastanon. Um, fire types, in my conclusion, have like pretty mediocre stats. They're not. They're not. They're never going to be. Well, at least unless you have like really overpowered moves, um, they they certainly have a lot to to overcome uh, in order to to be ranked uh, super high, and a lot of things have to fall into place like it has for a lonely Marowak. Um, but it's also the case that its moves are the moves and the move distribution, the ones that have really great move sets like Charizard, uh, also have really poor uh, stat distribution, which holds it back significantly. Um, so there's certainly huge upside with fire types, but they'll only likely come uh, with overpowered moves uh, through buffing current moves and or introducing uh, new moves, uh, though that's limited based off the moves that are not available. So anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Um, if you guys like this video or you always want to see more of these type of videos, uh, let me know uh, down in the comment section below, and I'll see everyone in the next video.